Okay, today we're going to start building an automata. This was something from Project Lead Away IED Unit 8.2. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with uh, making three different size little boards. We're going to constrain those into a box. Then we're going to add an axle handle, a couple of followers, a couple of guides. We'll incorporate some cams, and then we'll have a the basis of an automata. All right, so I'm going to start a new standard IPT, create. Let's start off with uh, making a four by four by one quarter inch um, board. So rectangular, four tab, four enter, finish sketch, extrude. We're going to extrude out a quarter of an inch. I'm actually going to change this color so that I can tell them all different. So I'm going to save that. We're going to call this 4 by 4 uh, I'm going to create another one. Going to create another standard IPT. This time we're going to go a 4 by 4 and a half. Rectangular. 4 tab, 4.5. Enter. Finish sketch. Extrude. 0.25. Enter. Change the color of this. Save it. And we're going to make one more, which is going to be a four by five. Start sketch, tangler, four tab five, enter, finish sketch, extrude, one, two, five. Save that. All right, so we have three different pieces. Um, that's kind of the kit that you get for the automata, is five separate pieces of wood, three different sizes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create an assembly of those. Standard IAM, great. First thing I'm going to pull in is four by four and a half. Hmm, I think I just grabbed the wrong piece. Uh, let me back out. Place. Oh, hi, else. So four by four and a half. This is going to be our base point that we're going to go ahead and ground. Then we're going to start building our box around that. So you got one piece of that. Then you're going to get two four by fours. So we're going to start incorporating those. What I tell my students is that uh, whenever they're going to do, be a constraining, they've built, they've been building these also in real life. So whenever they're going to do a constraint, if they're doing a mate, it would be similar to what they're doing in terms of gluing these pieces together. So, for instance, they're going to glue this portion to this face. And they're also going to mate or glue this portion to this face. And then I tell them if they want to do a flush, a flush would be something they would do with their fingers to go ahead and make everything all aligned. So they could flush that side to that side. This side to this side. And finally, we'll do the back side. All right, so we're starting to get our box. So now we're going to pull in two more pieces, the four by fives. So once again, they will be gluing a section, which will be a mate. So they're going to glue this section to this face. They're also going to be gluing section to that face. Now as they even everything up with their fingers, they're going to be using a flush. The bottom and we have our box. And I chose the different colors. It's easier to put it together in my mind with the different colors that you have. Uh, next thing we're going to incorporate, we're going to go ahead and place an axle handle. Project Lead the Way gives you an axle handle already. They also gave you a box, but my students wanted to build it similar to what they had from the kit. So we're going to put that axle handle through the two red pieces. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and make a sketch, start 2D sketch on this surface, make a circle. Make it virtually anywhere. The circle is diameter is 3 16 I'm also going to project some geometry so that I can see how far over. I'm going to pick this. The reason I'm picking that line is it's the bottom there in terms of projecting geometry. So that kind of gives me that area to this area where it can go. This other stuff is actually overlapped by the, um, by the top portion. So I'll project those geometries, and then I'm going to dimension them in. One dimension from here to there. That's going to be two inches. And finally, I'll dimension here to there, which could be 2.25. So I think that's about the center. I'm going to go ahead and finish. We're going to extrude that. And once again, we've created that in the assembly, so we'll go and extrude that. We're going to go all the way through. And that's going to get both sides. That's going to be where we're going to place our uh, axle handle. So what we're going to do on that is we are going to actually do an insert. We want our axle handle to rotate, but not slide in and out. So we're going to do an insert. So we go back to assemble, constraint, going to grab the end piece of the axle handle. We'll grab this over here. Actually, it helps if I pick insert, doesn't it? So insert to two and you can see that my axle handle does not go all the way through so what I would do because uh, it you know once again in real life if that gets bumped it's going to fall right out so I'm going to open this up and I'm look at this constraint and I'm going to edit it and instead of there I'm going to put like negative two and hope that it pushes all the way through all right so now we have one negative two looks like it's relatively evened out this thing will rotate but it will not slide in and out of the box so we have that portion done. Next, we're going to put two holes up in the top of this. Uh, so we'll go back 2D sketch, start 2D sketch, right there on that plane. We're going to put two circles, 3 16 I'm going to go ahead and project some more geometry so I know where to place it. We'll just pick these here and there. So I'm going to do a dimension from here to there. Two inches. Going to do a horizontal constraint to line these two up. Do a dimension from here to there. Come over out here so you can see it. Going to be one inch. We'll do another one from here to there. And then we'll make two inches. So we go ahead and have some holes. Some. Um, going to go ahead and go 3D modeling. Extrude. I'm going to grab both those, and instead of doing through all, because I only want it through this top portion, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to the bottom face, and I say I wanted to make the extrude to that bottom face, so that way it'll just cut it through right there. So we have our holes. Uh, next thing we're going to go ahead and do is place uh, two items. One is going to be called the guide. What this does, I'll show you in just a moment. And we're going to also place a follower, two followers that are going to fit into those holes. So what the guide's going to do is it's going to fit over top of this hole. It's going to help the follower. The follower is also going to go through the hole. It'll help the follower to slide up and down and maintain its vertical aspect. So for that, in terms of your constraint, we're going to do an insert. Grab the inner hole and that hole. And apply. Inner hole, that hole, and apply. So now those can rotate and stuff, but they will maintain in position. Um, I'm going to be sliding those down here. This one's going to be the bottom portion. So I like to rotate things around so that an inventor kind of knows what I'm looking to do. So I like to line them up as best I can. Get them like that. So on this, we want these followers to slide down into this hole. They're allowed to go up and down, but in a minute I'll show you that we don't want them to go side to side. So in terms of constraint, I'm going to use a mate. I'm going to grab the axis of that and the axis of this hole and hit apply. I'm going to grab the axis of this one, the axis of that hole, hit apply. So you notice now they slide up and down, but they also go side to side. 
So eventually we're going to connect some cams onto this axle handle. We don't want this thing going side to side and messing up. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and do some angular constraints. So under constraint, this area right here is angle. If you go ahead and click the inner wall and that plane going right through the middle of that, if you put a zero angle, it will go ahead and make them all parallel. So we'll do the other one as well while we're looking at it. All right, so you can see now they slide up and down, but they do not rotate side to side. So all they're going to do is up and down. Uh, now we're going to pull in two different cams. So we're going to place, I just have a hex cam here. And I also have a uh, pair cam. So we're going to have those. Um, there's supposed to be some manipulations whenever you bring your cams in. In turn to set up your cams properly. So I'm going to edit this, double clicking on the item. If you go to plane, you go to mid plane. You grab this portion, one wall, the other wall, it's going to create a plane right up through the middle of it. Uh, open up your origin. We're going to put in another plane going perpendicular to that. So I'm going to go offset to, for instance, this one here. It gives me a good one. I'm just going to hit zero, so that way it's right through there. So you can see how these are configured. This plane right here is going to line up with our follower, and you'll see how we use that plane in a few minutes after I've edited that part. I'll go ahead and return, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this other cam. So once again, mid plane, grab both sides, and it sets up the plane right in the middle. Open up origin to find a good axis. That one works perfect. Offset from our XZ. No offset, return. So now we have our automata looking good. Uh, we have some cams we're going to incorporate. The way you're going to incorporate those cams, you're going to constrain them. You're actually going to use the axis of your cam and the axis of your axle handle. Once again, axis of your cam. Doesn't really matter where you put it, axis of your handle, axle handle. So the cams slide back and forth. They slide up and down. So we're going to start locking them into place. So we're going to put this cam directly under this follower through those planes that we just created. So we're going to hit constrain, mate. I'm going to grab that plane right there. If you can't see it, I'll zoom in out a little bit more. It's this plane right here through the middle. And we're going to grab that one right there. So that's going to verify that that cam is going to be right up under that follower. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to grab that portion. We're going to grab this portion of our thing. It's going to slide it right in place. All right, so now you can see that we are directly in place. We can rotate, but we cannot slide back or forth, slide side to side. So now what we want to do is we want to start having our handle actually turn the cams. Right now they're not connected. So that's why we created that other plane in there. So we're going to come on back to our constraints. We're going to mate. We're going to mate this plane that we just created with the plane from the axle handle and lock it into place. Do the same thing with that one. Lock it into place. Hit apply. So now that we know that we have our cams are now locked onto the axle handle and as the axle handle rotates it forces your cams to go ahead and rotate. Now, the final step we're going to do is we're going to make sure that these cams follow the surface, I mean, sorry, the followers follow the surface of the cams. So for that, you're going to use a transitional constraint. If you go ahead and click on that portion, uh, sometimes these can be a little squirrely, so make sure that you get something directly up and down from it. Hit apply. That portion, portion here, apply. Um, those are the tougher of the constraints. If you have a problem with your stuff, it's probably having to do with those. Um, so now as I rotate my hand, axle handle, my cams will rotate as, and my followers will follow those along and move up and down based on, a loca on the, um, the shapes of the cams. So the hex cam goes up and down, little steps. Uh, for the pair cam, it sits still for half the rotation and then it'll go slowly up and slowly down. And that's the way you set up your automata. Thank you for watching.